What's up guys? Um, today I'm going to show you how to make one of these quick mp3 repeaters um, to replace your mp3 players or CD players that you would have to set up or recharge every night after your haunt's over. Um, these are pretty easy, pretty cheap. Um, I know you can buy them pre-made from like companies that make uh, prop controllers and stuff, but they can run you from you know some anywhere from a hundred to three four hundred dollars so this I think everything cost me maybe for one controller maybe 20 bucks so let's go over the stuff that you'll need flash drives um, these are cheap they're from um, Best Buy I was already getting something at Best Buy I knew that I needed these um, you could also use micro SD cards if you wanted to make it more compact but the cheaper option is the uh, flash drives and I'm cheap so <laughs> um, this pack right here was like 15 bucks so three dollars for flash drives not bad you could probably get them cheaper on Amazon though if you really wanted to here's the actual uh, like control board that will be running your audio so pretty much how it works is your positive and negative go there um, you can put a speaker out right here but I don't think it's very powerful but there's an aux out right here so you just plug your uh, auxiliary cord in there to whatever speakers you're running this is for a micro SD like I was telling you and then this is for a flash drive and then these buttons can do different things like go to the next track, put it in a different mode, volume, stuff like that. But the what I haven't really messed around with it too much, but the one that I've already made, um, whenever it just turns on, you don't press anything, it seems like it's already on full volume and it already is just going to repeat whatever track, which is what you want because you want to be able to just turn your stuff on. Um, like turn whenever you turn on an area of your haunt for the audio to just come on and just start playing without you having to go in and manually set things up so little Tupperware box um, if you're trying to keep this weatherproof um, even if you aren't trying to keep it weatherproof it's probably a good idea to get one of these you get a smaller one but this I just had laying around um, but if you use the micro ST you can get a way smaller Tupperware and get away with it Electrical solder, soldering iron, of course. Hot glue gun, hot glue sticks, and a five volt, two amp uh, power supply, DC. This little knife, or this little box cutter, they're Harbor Freight, right by the uh, cashier thing, and they're 60 cents, and I always buy like a handful whenever I go, so they always come in handy. So then you'll cut that off and then you'll take your wire strippers and peel this part off. Now you have your positive and negative wire exposed, and you'll just want to twist them together. Or not twist them together, but um, just twist them so that they're not they're not you know branching out or anything. But just drill like a quick hole in the side, kind of low on the box. So that actually messed up the box a little bit. I was just not being delicate with it. So what we'll do is this hole will be fine. We'll just patch up these cracks and stuff with a little hot glue. So anyway, we'll take this off, undo this packing on this um, power supply. And we'll run it from the inside out to that hole we just drilled. Actually, I'm tweaking. Run it into the box from the outside. Now, pull that through just to get it out of the way. We'll set it right there. 
and now we'll get our little board and right here by this little plug I guess is what it is there's a negative on this side it says bat negative and this one says bat positive so what you're gonna do is solder your red wire to the positive and your black wire to the negative and just so you know I know nothing about soldering I mean I'm literally like the first time I ever soldered something electrical was doing the other one before I did this one so um yeah I mean it's I didn't even watch a video or anything it's just uh I just did it how I thought I was supposed to do it and it seemed to work so so I'm gonna do this one Alright, so now that you have it soldered, shittily soldered, for me, um, plug it in and test it. Red light should come on right there. Plug it. Now, unplug your soldering iron and put your solder away so you don't lose it. So now you're going to load up your flash drive with any audio track you want. Just put that only only that audio track on it. No, no other files on there. Uh, I think if you put multiple audio files on there, it'll just it'll go through them. Like it'll just uh, it'll just cycle through them in the order you put them on the flash drive. So so now that you have your flash drive loaded up with your audio that you want, move this stuff off to the side. You'll just put it in to the flash drive. Now I'm just going to use this portable speaker for demo purposes, but normally in your haunt this would be a pair of computer speakers or just like a PA system or something that would just turn on when you turn your power on so that, you know, you're not going in and fidgeting with it like you would with a portable speaker. So, we'll plug the aux cord into the input on the control board, and then we'll plug it in and it should just play our audio. So now it's unplugged, so what we'll do is take this stuff on and get it mounted inside of our weatherproof box. Put it in there and glue it in in a way that you can access either your flash drive or your uh, micro SD super easy because if you, you know, obviously you put it way over on this side, it'll be a bitch trying to get it out. So. Now, we're just gonna put a fat dollop of hot glue on the bottom of this and glue it down. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue on this, like on the inside of the Tupperware, and then I'm gonna put the controller on top of it. Be generous with it because you don't want this thing falling out or anything. And then just lay this on there and just hold it there for a little bit. So now that you have your main piece glued down, I just, for, you know, so that I don't have to think about it, I'm gonna glue the edge of the wire down. Don't glue over where you soldered, but just right where the wire is um, coming off, just so that it holds it down and it doesn't move on you. That way, if this gets kicked or something, it's not going to go um, and mess up your solders or anything like that. You want to drill a hole on this closest top end where your aux cord is going to go into. 
and line it up with the uh, aux input on the controller. All right, so now that you have a hole for your aux input, um, like I said, I'm gonna show you how this thing is reliable. I'm gonna unplug it and plug it in a couple times just to show you. So say you're turning on the power for one area of your haunt, um, just on like a breaker or something. So when you turn on your power, and if you have like a um, like a surge protector that has your speakers, this and lights or whatever are in your set, um, whenever the power gets turned on, then all of your audio will just come on because your speakers and your controller will turn on. the song ends, whatever file is on the uh, SD card, I'm assuming that, I'm assuming that whatever, if you have more than one audio file on the SD card, it'll just go to the next file, like in line, and it'll just repeat in that order. Um, there, you might be able to make it, um, like, uh, shuffle the tracks, but I'm not sure I haven't messed around with it that much yet. But all I'm ever going to do is put one track on it at a time, so, um, Maybe I'll do one for the queue line that has a bunch of different tracks on it, but if I do that, I'll let you know how that works out. But anyway, plug it in one more time just to show you. As soon as it gets power, it starts playing. literally be any audio track you choose to put on the flash drive. So now what we're going to do is we're going to seal up this messed up hole we made. So we can unplug our aux so we don't need it anymore. Put that off the side and there's where your aux cord will go in. Um, so now we're just going to seal this up with hot glue so that water and stuff can get in. So now that we have it all hot glued and sealed off right there, um, what we're going to do is spray paint the whole outside of this and the lid black. Um, you don't have to do this, but I just do it so it'll hide it better. Um, like I say, um, you can go as crazy as you want with this. I mean, you can make a, you can make a way better shell and casing for this thing. Um, this is just the basic, cheap way to do it. Um, I was thinking that if I wanted to mount this to the wall or something, or to a controller board or something, I could hot glue like washers or something to the corners and then just screw it into whatever I needed to. But there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different stuff you can do. You don't have to do it just like this. That's what I'm saying. So here's your finished MP3 repeater um, with the black paint and everything. Um, you could use one of these uh, silver gold sharpies and write over the black. So I'm just gonna write MP3 on here. So that I'll know. This thing's still a little sticky, but there it is. And we'll plug it in and show you one more time, but it's pretty much done. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this. Um, I thought I'd share because I'm making a bunch of these for next year. Um, I did the MP3 players this last year and it just, you know, gave me PTSD from doing the uh, home haunts that way. So I was like, there's gotta be a better way. And I'm like, there's no way that, you know, paying a hundred to $300 for a 
MP3 repeater from a, you know, from a company is the only way, so did a little research. Uh, I didn't see any other videos on this, so thought I'd share it with you guys, and yeah, so like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, um, let me know if you make any of these, send me some pics or whatever, um, and peace out guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>